Have you ever wondered what happens when a prankster wife and her no-nonsense husband clash? My name is Mia, and I'm 33. I'm married to my husband, Alvin, who many people call a stick in the mud. Actually, my good friend Beatrice wonders how we even got married in the first place because I'm literally the opposite of that. I'm a bit of a jokester, I like to prank people and play little tricks on them, just some harmless fun that I like to bestow upon my loved ones. But Alvin never cared much for my pranks and jokes. Come on, lighten up, it was just a whoopee cushion, I told him. I don't care for your silly little games, he responded. He was absolutely no fun, until one day, something strange happened. His birthday was approaching, and I wanted to do something special for him, a proper birthday surprise, if you will. He had been eyeing a watch for some time, and this watch wasn't part of what I had planned for his actual birthday, which was a weekend getaway to a fancy resort. But I thought that perhaps he would enjoy something tangible for his birthday as well. Beatrice helped me set up some small decorations so that he could feel extra special once he arrived home. Being a bit of a trickster, I wanted to put him in a position where he thought that something was wrong, so that he could come home early, receive his gift, and we could spend the rest of the evening enjoying each other's company. He'd been working so hard for such a long time, I thought it would be nice for him to come home to a lovely surprise, just to ease his mood and kick into gear the upcoming festivities for his birthday celebration. Even though Beatrice and I had set up everything, we couldn't rack our brains for a good enough excuse for him to come home. What if you say the house is on fire? No, B, that would be too drastic. Besides, he would tell me to call the fire department and all these other emergency services before calling him. He'd be livid. Okay, what if you said you broke your arm and that you can't call the ambulance because your arm is broken? How did I call him then? True, true. Okay, fine, let's say you have a fever. It's not too drastic, but it's concerning enough for him to drop what he's doing and come straight home to you. That's perfect, thank you, B. You're welcome, sweetie. Well, I should probably get going now that everything is set up. He's going to be so excited. I know he's been wanting this watch for a long time now. You're a good wife, Mia. Thanks, B. I'll let you know how everything goes. Sure thing, but don't call me tonight unless it's an emergency, of course. I want you to enjoy Alvin's company. You can tell me all about it in the morning. Okay, love you, bye. And with that, B left me to do what needed to be done call my husband. I racked my brain for those high school drama classes, searching for some acting skills that I could put on so that my husband wouldn't clock my deceitfulness. Being married to me for this long teaches you a thing or two about my antics, this had to go very smoothly so that he would come home as soon as possible. Hello, Mia? Hello, are you okay? What's wrong? I don't feel so good, babe. I have a fever, and it seems to be getting worse. Oh my god, what's your temp? 104 Fahrenheit, that's a fever, all right. Geez, you think you have an infection? Maybe you're just overheating. No, Alvin, I'm not just overheating, that's impossible. I think I'm coming down with something. I need you to come home now, right now. Yes, babe. I need you, please. Babe, you know I'm working. I can't just drop this because you think you have a fever. I don't think I do, I know I do. Please come home now. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't think it would be wise for me to do that. I was so shocked that I almost dropped the act and gave myself away, but luckily, I caught myself. I wasn't sure if he knew that I was toying with him because, what sort of husband says something like that? What do you mean it isn't wise? Wow, I just mean that if you are coming down with something, then don't you think I should stay away? Why, you're afraid of getting sick? You can wear a mask, babe. Please, it's urgent, I just need you home right now. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pass on that. With the way you're sounding right now, 
I don't need an infection ruining my plans. It's my birthday this weekend, you know, and I and the boys wanted to go golfing, fishing, camping, we haven't decided yet on what we want to do, really. So, you're so wrapped up in your activities that you don't want to be with your wife? Pretty much, yeah. I don't have time to be sick, babe. I'm turning 40, for crying out loud, the big four zero. I can't have you ruining my plans like that. Plus, I'm a working man, I need to be in tip-top shape so that I can meet these deadlines. I think I'm gonna get a hotel room or something for the time being, but thanks for telling me in advance. Guess I dodged the bullet now. Phew, wait, click. He hung up the phone. I was so shocked, how could he be so crass with me? Did he not care enough about me being sick, so much so, to the point that he wanted to book a hotel room just to get away from me? I didn't even have the words for what I was describing. After pacing and thinking for some time about what just transpired, I decided to call B. This better be an emergency because I told you I want you two lovebirds to be with each other. It is an emergency, well, kinda, but I don't think you're gonna like it. I dunno, maybe I'm overthinking things. What's wrong? Well, I told Alvin that I was sick, right? Put on my best acting skills and sold it to him really well and everything. Aha. Uh -huh. And, well, gosh, I'm even embarrassed to say it. Come on, you know you can tell me anything and everything, nothing to be embarrassed about. I love this one. Well, he said he wasn't going to come home tonight because he's scared of catching whatever I caught since my fever was so high. I, what? I know, right? He did not say that. You're pranking me right now, right? You, oh my goodness, haha, <laughs> very funny, Mia. You almost got me there. I'm not joking, B, I'm very serious. He would rather stay in a hotel and come home and tend to his ailing wife. Hold on, I'm coming over right now, so we can talk about this. Twenty minutes later, and B was at my doorstep. When I opened the door to let her in, she looked like she wanted to murder somebody. I swear to God, if he didn't come home in the time it took me to get here, I will go to that office and beat him myself. Where is he? Alvin. Alvin. I know you're home, and you want to play a trick on me. You can tell this whole house apart. He's not here. Oh my sweet baby, I'm so sorry. Why would he say those things, though? He said right now because his birthday is coming up and he's also working, so he doesn't want to be home for the time being. What a joke! How could he do that to his wife? I'm still trying to wrap my head around what just happened. You should have heard him too, B. He was so cold about it, too, not a single ounce of remorse in his voice. Honestly, I would rather he said he's come home later, that would still be wrong, but it's better than this. Has he lost his mind? Maybe he bumped his head on something because, go, I don't know where this indifference came from. Now imagine if I was sick, oh, heads would have rolled. Maybe he thought that you would come and help me since you're a nurse and whatnot. Okay, is that what he said? No, actually. Wow, you know, it would be better if he said that again. I'm not trying to say that this is the best scenario, but it would have been slightly better if he brought me up as a shoulder to lean on in the meantime. It's like he didn't even put any effort into his crappy excuses. I know. It's his birthday soon, but come on, there's no need to act like an entitled brat now. I don't know what to do. I have this lovely watch and all these candles and decorations, but no one to spend some time with. I guess I just missed his company and wanted him to come home early to a nice surprise that we put together to put his racing mind at ease. He even said that he would go fishing or camping or whatever with his friends even though he knows about our plans for the resort. Girl, you know what? This is it, he's taking you for granted. He's gotten too used to your love. Maybe it's time that you took some of it away, just to teach him a lesson. 
What do you mean? Beatrice spent the rest of the night with me, consoling and advising me on what I needed to do. It should come as no surprise that I, a trickster, would want to seek some revenge in this situation. But honestly, even if I wasn't as playful as I am, I think any woman in my position would be craving what I wanted, revenge. I still couldn't believe that he spoke to me as if I was some annoying girl who had a silly high school crush on him. I was his wife, for God's sake. At that moment, I knew what I needed to do. I needed to remind him of just how good he had it these days with me, and we had a splendid time reminiscing on our greatest friendship memories in addition to spending time with my best friend. She did what best friends do best, which is to give solid advice. She continued to advise me about the situation, as well as giving me tips on how to get my revenge. Okay, what if you hide all of his socks, but only one sock from each pair? It would drive him crazy. I like it, but he just end up buying more socks. Okay, you could lightly vandalize his car. Oh my goodness, are you trying to get me killed? He loves that car. Well, okay, fine. What if we give him a taste of his own medicine? When you mean? Well, he doesn't want to take care of you because you're sick, right? What if you do the same, but... But he isn't sick. That's what you think, but I know something that you don't. What is it? As a nurse, it's relatively easy for me to access patients. What if I call him tomorrow and tell him he has a disease that is going to leave him speechless? Okay, a disease like what? What about cancer? Okay, girl, that's way too intense, extreme. Okay, go, that's way too intense, extreme. Okay, fine, we could say that he also has a cold, but he wouldn't experience symptoms. It has to be something seemingly benign, but serious enough to cause the stress in someone so that he feels the same way that I'm feeling. Okay, what about HSV-1? English, please. It's herpes, oral herpes, the most common kind of herpes. Isn't that a bit extreme? Some people might think so, but honestly, that's just the stigma surrounding herpes. Living with herpes is relatively fine, so long as you're not stressed about it. Half of the American population has it, numbers are actually thought to be higher because herpes can be asymptomatic, meaning people can go their whole lives not knowing they have it. So what you're saying is, he could legitimately have it, even though we're pranking him. Precisely. Good to know. But what if he goes to the doctor to get it checked out and stuff? Knowing Alvin, he won't do that. He'd probably be holed up somewhere, feeling sorry for himself, even though there's nothing to feel sorry about, it's just the stigma from having herpes. But people who have it are living very normal and peaceful lives. It would be his own biases that were driving him crazy. Then the plan is perfect. Great, so I will call him and say something like, I'm a nurse, so I have access to these files, even though I shouldn't tell you, I thought you should know, blah, blah. Right, right, and then afterwards, he'll call me, all stressed out, and that's when I give him a taste of his own medicine. I like it, that will teach him not to be so cold and callous in the future. The next day came around, and Alvin received a call from B. Oh, Beatrice, what a lovely surprise. Hey, Alvin. What's wrong? Why do you sound so sad? Look, you're like a brother to me, yeah, so it hurts me to say this, but I have some terrible news. Oh no, what happened? Well, you remember the medical test you did last week? Yes, I do. I don't know why I didn't get those back yet. You'll get the official report soon. Do you remember how you tested for herpes on top of your other blood tests? Yeah, well, I always do that. I know it's futile, but I just like to be furry, you know? Yeah, well, turns out your meticulous nature came in clutch for you. I'm so sorry to tell you, but you've tested positive for herpes. What? Again, all of the details will be made privy to you soon, but I managed to take a peek at your file because I had this gut feeling, and it turns out I was right. 
How is that even possible? Isn't that an STD? Yes, it is, but you appear to have HSV1, which is the most common form of herpes, as it spreads through oral contact. B. You ought to believe me, not once have I ever cheated on Mia. This is impossible. Hey, hey, I know, don't worry, calm down. I know you wouldn't hurt her like that. It is very unlikely, but you could have gotten it from sharing a drink or exchanging other oral fluids with someone who does have the virus. But I wasn't around anyone like that. Think about it, you work in an office, right? People are always sick. That is true. Try and think hard about what might have happened. I mean, I'm pretty reckless when it comes to sharing drinks with coworkers and friends, you see. Maybe you can track it from there. Look, I gotta go now. I could get in deep trouble for sharing this information with you beforehand. I'm really sorry once again. Thanks for letting me know. Wow, okay, yeah, thanks. Sorry, my brain is just trying to understand what's going on. I know it can be very difficult to understand. What's going on, take all the time you need. So sorry to bring such awful news near your birthday. No, it's okay, thanks so much for telling me. I don't even know what to do now. You'll figure it out, but stay close to loved ones for support and love, you're going to need it. Okay, thanks, bye. After this conversation, I got a lovely surprise call from Alvin. Hello, babe, I need you. I don't even know what to do. What's wrong? I just got a call from Beatrice. She gave me some unsavory news. Okay, what happened? Well, she told me that I have herpes. What? It's not what you think, trust me. I would never do that to you. I must have gotten it from sharing a drink or something. I don't know. I, I don't even know what to say. I need you, please. I don't think that would be possible. What? Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't want to be at risk of getting whatever you have, Mia. How could you say that? I just don't think that it would be wise for me to do that. But babe, you know I'm working. I can't just drop this because you think you have herpes. But what about your boys? They can't help you. I don't want them, I want you. I see, so you only want to be with me when it benefits you. Look, I'm sorry for what I said earlier, but I'm your husband and you have to obey me, so when I say come over, I mean come over now. Yeah, I don't think so, dude. It would be very wise of me to do that, but all the best with your situation, though. I'll be checking out from time to time, but I'm afraid I can't see you. I hung up the phone before he could say anything else. I was feeling giddy because the plan worked. I've been trying to call me back on numerous occasions, but I ignored his attempts at communicating, at least for a while. It felt good getting the revenge I wanted, even if I couldn't see his mind unfolding right before my own eyes. Eventually, though, he did come home, and I greeted him at the front door. I'm so sorry. I don't want to be with you. I'm sorry that I wasn't willing to help my wife in her time of need, and, and I'm sorry I prioritized hanging out with the boys, even though you clearly made plans for my birthday. I took you for granted, and I'm sorry. MMM, okay, okay, that's it. Yeah, I think you've suffered enough. I also have some news to tell you. Okay, what is it? You don't have herpes. What are you talking about? Did you and Beatrice, yep, you two sat down, conjured this story, and told me that I have herpes. Yep, to teach you a lesson. You don't actually have it. Oh. Thank God. I knew you'd be relieved, but even if you did have it, it wouldn't be much of a problem. I'll never play with your feelings like that again, as long as you promise not to play with mine. So, sure thing, as long as you remember to respect me and care for me as a husband should. 
The only reason why I did what I did was that you disrespected me, you took me for granted. I couldn't let that slide. I know, babe, and I'm truly sorry for everything. I'll never do something like that again. You might just kill me. And with that, folks, we never let our pettiness and self-centeredness affect us in this way again. We ended up spending the birthday weekend at the resort as was originally planned, and ever since that day, I've noted that Alvin was extra careful in not mistreating me, lest he be reminded of the stress and turmoil he was experiencing in that hotel room when he found out that he had herpes. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you're curious to see where this journey takes us next, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss a single update. Your support is what keeps this channel alive and kicking, and every like, comment, and share means the world to us. We've got plenty more stories, insights, and surprises coming your way, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.